Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Coffee Run Live, episode number 1,005,362. Because I cannot remember what episode we are up to. I'm sure it's like 290 something. I actually don't know what it is. If I had to really work it out, I could probably work it out. So we are running a hot seat here today. I have got the fabulous Kim. Let me let's say hi to Kim. Oh, and then Kim Hall just jumped on. Hey, Kim. It's like Kim. And Joe is in the office. Hello, Jessica. Joe is in the office enrolling new students into her into her piano lesson programs, which is really fantastic and awesome. We are cooking with gas here today. So one of the common things though that has come up this morning, it's been really interesting and I thought that I would just give you a quick little, um, a quick little insight and a quick little rundown into what we've been chatting about because I think it's actually really relevant and I think it's really important. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I know, oh, Jessica says hello. <laughs> who, else is, who else is coming on? Oh, hey Jess. She said hello to me too, that was really cute. Thank you for not ignoring me. I would have felt really bad and awful. So <laughs> one of the things that we've discovered today is how we, you know, it can be really great when we've got a project to work on, right? When we've got this thing that we are, <laughs> Kim Hall has said, it's hi, it's the day of Kim's. It is the day of Kim's. Uh, like I know what I'm like when I've got a project that I'm working towards, I'm really kind of like motivated and pumped and you know, things kind of like move through really, really quickly. And then when the project is done, it can lead to a little bit of meh-ness. Now, I don't, Kim and I have been talking about this today. Joe and I have been talking, Joe Senko, Joanna Senko, Joanne Senko even, has been talking about this today. So I know if I felt like it, it's probably, and these ladies have felt like it, it's probably something that's a little bit common. So it's kind of like the curse of the achieved goal right? Where you're, you're driving towards something, you're, you, you might be working out to try and hit a certain level in, in your fitness. You might be, I don't know, like I've, I've got a, a, we've got like a little self-contained unit thing, granny flat thing on our property. We call it the bungalow because uh, it's very posh. Uh, it's not posh, it's really awful inside. But what it, like, I, I really want to renovate that and have that done. And, and talking this morning, it was like, well, you know, if you don't have your, your, your next, kind of like your next thing, your next goal, the next project, it can lead to these feelings of apathy, of inaction. I know I feel like it's like, oh my God, I feel like I'm walking, waking, walk, wading through quicksand, walking through quicksand. I can find it really freaking hard to kind of like to keep going, to, to find that next thing that's going to push me forward. So if you've ever felt like this, then you, number one, you are not alone. And number two, there are some things that you can do about it. So you can go in and do some like goal setting and stuff like that, but I would actually challenge you to do something a little bit even more different. So we've got committed. How's this? So the girls have committed to each writing a book next year. <sighs> it's so exciting. So Kim has said that she's going to write a book for children. And Joe has said that she's going to write a book, plan a book, which is really freaking badass. Let me give you the hot tip. So like that can feel like a really big project, right? I want to renovate my bungalow. Um, I've got the plan in place for a new book. I will not be writing that in the next few months. I can guarantee you that unless I do it or on holidays, perhaps. Hmm. Give me Give me something to do on holidays because, you know, God forbid I relax and not do anything for <laughs> 10 days, <laughs> 10 or 11 days. So what is it that's actually going to challenge you? What's going to drive you? Now, I know that we are all time poor or are we? Are we actually really time poor or are we just really good at not prioritizing the things that are really important to us? You know, I could, I could say, oh yeah, I'm like really busy, I'm really busy, but here's the thing that I know for certain is that if I needed to find an hour a day to do something specifically, then I would find a way to fit that in. For example, at the moment, I'm running a training session at 5 a.m. and then I'm doing another call at 6 a.m. with friends and then I'll go to the gym and then I come home and then we do the school run and then I'm kind of like into my day some days at nine and then other days it's not till 11. So... If I really wanted to write a book, if I really wanted to write a new book, then I would actually create a, a good hour a day is more than is more than enough, by the way, create an hour a day to be able to focus on doing that thing. The way that I do this at home, so like I'm pretty structured and I'm pretty good with, with setting stuff up at uh, like for work, right? So yesterday 
oh, I've got to talk to them about social rebels. So yesterday morning, I was like, all of the all of the graphics for social rebels, which you might have seen the the post go up earlier today. Actually, let me grab my computer because my just really good curriculum of us when I remember it's so. Oh my god, you guys, it's going to be so amazing. So, um, this is my latest project, right? So was, I've been. Oh gosh, I feel a bit scattered. I feel like the cough, the caffeine isn't kicking in yet. Oh, the cough, the caffeine has kicked in. Oh my god, I can't even speak. Kim's just going like, yeah. So I agree, that's exactly how I feel. So one of the things that I think is super important, hey Nari, is to create the time and space for the things that are important. So yesterday, what I was doing is I was going through and I was getting all the, all the things ready for social rebels. And I was thinking, okay, so what do I want this to look like? How, how do I want it to play out? How do I want to deliver it? What do I, do I want to keep this as kind of like a... Um, like a core program that I run continuously or how do I, how is it that I actually want to do it? So I was like, oh, I love me a good new project. So I did all the graphics, I wrote the sales pages, I did all of the, all of the technology and stuff yesterday, whereas usually I would go and prioritize, I might go and prioritize other things, right? So I created the time and the space for all of that and it's really crucial that if there are things that are important that you're actually doing that. But now I'm all excited about Social Rebels, so let me tell you about that. So I guess that one of the things that I've been thinking about as well in terms of projects and programs and books and, and the way that we do things, like I, I did things in a really um, kind of like a rigid way for a really long time. I am someone who is typically quite driven by certainty. Like I like the security that, that certainty brings me, so knowing that uh, like I run an eight week program every two months, this is in the past, then I knew that I could basically bank on certain things happening in certain ways. And it served me, I loved it until it didn't, right? Until it was like created a, a set of concrete boots that I had, I felt like I had no sense of freedom, even though I had a, you know, a ton of freedom. I didn't feel free. I felt like I was chained to the way that I was doing things and that didn't make me feel very good. And so I decided towards the end of last year, fuck it, the, the rule book is being thrown in the pool. I can't throw, I can't show you the pool because we're on the other side of the house today. It was like, screw it, rule book, gone, done. How can I create some fun and some variety in my, in my life and in my world that still gives me this sense of certainty? So the way that I've done this with work this year is I've just had, I've got the, the, all the program, the different types of programs that I've been rolling out, and I've got to tell you, freaking fun. But what I realized over this last week, actually, and probably it, it sort of was coming to light a little bit while I was in the States, is kind of like, I didn't throw the baby out with the bath water, but I've, I've just done things so drastically different this year, and it's been great and amazing and a wonderful experience, and I'm working with the most, hands down, the most amazing kick-ass humans the most badass business owners that you could possibly uh, work with. I'm, I'm so blessed to work with the people that I've worked with this year. And I do believe that if I hadn't been doing things in the way that I've been doing things, that these people just would not have come. You know, it's like, uh, it's, it's, it's like an energetic thing, right? It, it's just what happens. So I was thinking over this last week, you know, what, what is the next thing that I'm going to create? How am I going to do it? And I was like, well, you know, nobody told me that, that I couldn't go back and do some eight week things again. So what I decided to do with Social Rebels is it's an eight week program and I'm kind of going to run it like a core type offering over the course of, well, I don't know, I might change my mind, but certainly it's running in November and it's definitely running in February. And I used to run five eight week programs a year. I used to run three or four, maybe five two day events each year as well for clients who came through programs, maybe three. And then the, um, like, and then a big event like Visible Live, for instance, or it used to be called Spy School. So I'd run a big Spy School event and they'd come to that. And I suppose what I was thinking about yesterday, I was like, why can't I have freaking both? You know, <laughs> Uh, it was. It sounds really obvious, and I've been talking for years about creating things in the way that you want to create them, doing things in the way that you want to do them, saying things in the way that you want to say them, not doing things just because it's the way that things have to be done. And yet, somehow or another, I was like, 
I don't know how to make this all work. So yesterday I'm like, fuck it, I want my cake and I'm gonna eat it too. So I've decided to run this for the short, for the next, for the, for the foreseeable future, this eight week program called Social Rebels, and then still do these other smaller programs that go for a lot shorter periods of time and they're kind of a little bit more punchy and, and fast paced. I'm like, why can't I have both? So I have, so here's what I spent time yesterday building out this project called Social Rebels. So here's what we're gonna go through over eight weeks. Week one, we're gonna get clarity of your message. So what makes you different? What's your mission? What does your brand look like? Getting super, super clear on the foundational element stuff that are important, uh, the, yeah, the elements that are really important in order for you to be able to use social media to create visibility, impact, and profits. Social Rebels is all about that, visibility, impact, and profits. If you do the acronym, it's actually VIP. <laughs> of course it is, so it'd be very, very fabulous. Um, week two is all about clients. So your hot, cold clients, how do you find them? How do you communicate with them? What are, what are they like? Who, who do we really wanna work with? Now, I'm particularly opinionated on niching and how I believe that niching should be done. Um, in a way that still creates freedom, but it also creates magnetism, right? But by you and people are magnetized to you because it's not just the words that you use, it's how you're showing up for them, how you're leading them, how you're energetically making yourself available for those people to come into you, right? And part of it is demographics. But if I was to say, well, you know what? I wanna work with a woman who is 40 years old with two children who, lives in a rural town, then that's fine, but it really kind of closes in, number one, your creativity, and number two, the opportunities that you have to be able to connect with all of these other people, right? So that's week two, we go through all of that, and it's freaking fun, it's, it's you know, why not work with people who you like, who like you, who are really fun to deal with, who also will achieve amazing results, because that's what you do, you help facilitate great results. Week three is all about communication because like you'll notice that everyone starts with a C. Communication is, is, all, is all about covering off on everything that you need to do in order to be able to build really strong relationships with people. So to be very boring, marketing is all about building a know you, like you, trust you, helping people to get to know you, get to like you, learn to trust you, and then they trust you, that's when they hand over some money and you become, or, or you become their trusted advisor and then they hand over money. Right, so they're just like, yes, you know, I get it. I'm with you, I like your style, I like your sass, I like your pizzazz, I like the way you say fuck you to all of the things, or what, however it is that you do it, right? Just because that's how I do it, doesn't mean that's how you have to do it. Your people will get to know you, like you, trust you, and the only way that they can do that is by you being able to communicate with them and build relationships online. Okay, so we're gonna be looking at that. Then we step into week four which is all about building these online containers, another C, for people to be able to find you. Now, these are your social media platforms, right? So we've got the container of Facebook. You guys, it is not negotiable. You're gonna have a Facebook page. And then we're also gonna have your website. And then we're gonna have another, at least one other digital container for people to be able to find you. So we're gonna go through what those are, what you should choose, how you should make them work, and everything like that in order to, remember, create visibility, impact, and profits. This whole Social Rebels program is all about visibility, impact, and profits, but doing things in a way that is almost like, well, it's kind of rebellious because I don't want you just to have to follow a formula. We're gonna be creating frameworks for you to be able to work within so that you can really do things in your way instead of, the way that it has to happen that was decided by the internet marketing gurus in 2005, right? So we're gonna do things in, in your way, in a way that feels good, in a way that is done with integrity and with freaking authenticity, always leading from who you are all the time. Week five, we step into content and copywriting. We've got a double C right there, how fun. Content and copywriting is pretty self-explanatory, but you know, I, I think it's, it's so fascinating to me how some people will say, you can't write your copy like that. You can't create your content like that. And I'm like, well, actually, fuck you. I'm gonna create my content in the way that I wanna create it. I'm gonna do my copywriting in the way that I wanna create it. Now, there are some elements in there that are really important to have, right? Because you don't just wanna be vomiting words on the internet 
and having people go, yeah, that's great. And then off they go and, you know, we kind of like warm them up and prep them to go buy from somebody else. That is unhelpful to you. Very helpful to somebody else, but unhelpful for you. So we're going to go through copy content and copywriting, the things that are really important in there, the, the, the elements that are really important, but also allow you the freedom of self-expression. Okay, and I think that that's actually critical and crucial right now because everyone else is following the magic formula. Address the problem. What is the solution? Give a call to action. You know, no, no, no. And most people don't feel like they've got that, that freedom within what they're doing to be able to create that. So we're gonna step you through how to do that. Week six is all about catapulting. So we've been building foundations, we've got you clear on your message, we've got you really clear on your hot cold clients, we know what we're doing in terms of conversations, we know what we're doing in terms of content and copywriting, then it's time on oh, the containers that we're gonna use, and then it's like, okay, time is to get out there, bitch, and actually start to make it happen. So we're gonna catapult you up and out there. Then we're gonna get into conversations. So conversations are really important, obviously, because relationships are built through conversations, right? Whether it's verbal conversations, whether it's written conversations or typed conversations, uh, whether it's whether it's like um, you know sticker conversations that I'll, I'll sometimes have with people is like sticker and then sticker and then sticker. It's fun. So conversations are are really important. And the thing that we've got to understand is that conversations aren't only measured by the clicking of a like or by the comments that come up underneath your videos or underneath your posts. People are having conversations in their heads with you, aren't they? Yeah, you know, I know I've, I've chatted to people before and I'm like, so, you know, if I'm kind of like leaning in and, and speaking a little bit more quietly or whatever, you know, I know that that can be mirrored, right? So conversations and getting in rapport with your people, there's, there's an art to that online, so I'm gonna teach you how to do that. And then week eight, I've told you that it's about visibility and impact, which is what we've done, but then you've got to work out how do I get the fucking money, Nicola? So week eight is all about converting to cashola. Show me the money, Jerry Maguire styles. My watch is trying to talk to me. I don't want to talk to my watch, I want to talk to you. So week six is all about sales. Let's call it what it is. Now, I know that if you have a business, then you need to make money. If you're like, oh, I don't really want to, I'm not don't say in this tone, but oh, I'm not worried about the money. I just want to be able to create impact. I just want to help some people. That's great. But if you're not bothered about bringing in money, then you have a hobby. You do not have a business. If you even charities need to make money because they've got overheads, they've got to pay wages, they've got to buy all, all source product. Like they've got to, they've got to pay for their accounting software. Even a charity needs to make money. So we need to know how to make sales. So I'm really passionate about dispelling. The, the stigma that is that, that tends to come around sales, right? Um, most people don't wanna be salesy. And my challenge to you is that what if we decide that sales is actually you being of service, you letting people know how they can experience a much deeper transformation with you rather than you know floating around the internet trying to find all of the answers and not actually having someone who cares about them in the way that you do, right? You, they, they need you on, your, on their team. You know, you need me on your team. Your people need you on their team. So it's, it's actually your, your duty. You have an obligation to help people see how they can buy from you, right? Because the other thing that happens is that when people buy from you, you can go forth and do more things out there in the world, right? It's just, it's just how it is. You can help more people because you're not worried about what the fuck is going on underneath your financial household. Right? So we've got to get really comfortable with sales and, and, and doing it, but doing it from a place of authenticity. Again, in this one, in this particular module, I give you some different frameworks so that you can try them on for size and be like, yep, I'm going to try this one on today. And you know what? That feels like shit. Okay. I'm going to try this one on today. Okay, great. Now each of the sales strategies that I teach you will convert and they will work. You've got to get them in your body and you kind of got to practice them before you can chuck it out and say, no, nah, that doesn't work for me. But it also gives you some things that you can kind of revisit and come back to as well and try on for size. So that's the eight weeks, really fun. And then you get to come along for a fantastic two-day event. 
<laughs> Kim said yay, she'll be there. A two day event where we get to then expand and work through whatever it is that you need to, whatever it is that you need to do, whatever it is that you need to learn. Uh, and we'll run three or four of those throughout 2020. So you'll get to come along to that when you're part of this program at no charge. So, so fun and amazing. I'm so excited about this, you know, and just as a, as a different aside, you know, this is, so this is my latest project. This is my latest baby, right? And um, I guess like one of the things, oh, the link, by the way, is nicolamorass.com.au forward slash social rebels. Okay, it is not the cheapest program that I have run, but it is by far the cheapest eight week program I have ever run, hands down, even if you decide to come in um, on the VIP level. It's, it's half, it's half at least, um, probably a bit more than half of what of what any other investment to work with me for for this amount of time has ever been. So, um, it's really freaking powerful. It's just really it's just really powerful. Hey Margaret, I bet you can talk to the people about how fantastic my programs are. <laughs> just to put you on the spot. <laughs> welcome, welcome to Friday. So that's the Social Rebels program. Now, I guess what I also want to chat with you about that, the link is in the comments there, you can see it. Uh, let me know if you have any troubles uh, getting over to the landing page or the sales page, or if you've got any questions about anything that I haven't talked about, make sure you let me know. But I think what I found really interesting yesterday, so I had a tech issue yesterday where my webinar dropped out. Six minutes in, the webinar stopped working, and I'm just like, ah, oh, shit, that's really irritating, but you know what, that's them's the breaks. Um, but what it created, what it meant for me is I, I was able to go and really think about the feeling and, and, the, and the, the, almost like the branding that goes behind Social Rebels. So if you've been following me for at least like at any point in time, you'll know that I'm a roller derby player, right? Not necessarily a fantastic one just yet, but I'm getting better, I'm getting stronger. So that's that. So I've been sitting there thinking about like, how do I look, how do I, how do I want this to look? How do I want it to feel? And I tried like a little project and it was fun, right? And I know that sometimes then what can happen is like, oh, now I'm a little bit bored. So what I've decided to do is have this and then also have the other projects going on at the same time. Because something that I've learned about me is that if I don't have something to look forward to, if I don't have something that I'm working towards, if I don't have something that's really driving me that I'm excited about, then I can end up in almost a depressive state, right? So if you feel like, and we, like we've been talking about this today, if you've been feeling like you've been a little bit purposeless or maybe a little bit, I, I, I don't want to bandy around the word depressed, but I'm going to use it because I don't have the, 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 the word right at this moment, but maybe feeling a bit disconnected from purpose. Maybe you've been feeling a little bit disconnected from, um, from doing what it is that you're really here to do. The best piece of advice that I can give you is, is think of a project that you can implement that regardless of the outcome, that you're going to have fun delivering, that you're going to have fun doing, whether it's renovating a bungalow, remember the fancy word for our granny flat, whether it's uh, creating a new program, whether it's going, fuck it, rule book in the pool or rule book in the ocean if you're next to the ocean or rule book in the river or down the bath in the toilet, wherever it is, they're all, there's water involved in all of those things. Uh, wherever that rule book is going, you know, is if, if, you, if you just get rid of all of that stuff and go, screw it, I'm just gonna do something that, that feels really good, that is gonna give me a project, that is gonna give me something to look forward to and start to work towards, then, you know, go work out what that is. And what you'll probably find, I know for me anyway, that is that that motion, not just physical motion, but energetic motion forward creates momentum. It creates motivation. It creates the next thing. So what will happen is that the next thing that you need to do will be made um, like noticeable to you or the next step will make itself known to you. And then you can start progressing forward. So there you are, my friends. I hope that that, oh, I don't even hope, I know that that has been helpful. I trust that that has been helpful for you. I'm gonna get back to the people. jo has been doing all of her enrollments and I think Kim is, she's looking at her computer, going, she's getting some inspiration. So she's getting some, um, 
ideas down for some children's books. So I'm really excited to go find out what she's doing. I've been speaking very loudly. So my phone is about to go flat. Uh, I've been speaking for some time now. So I'm going to make sure you go check out Social Rebels. We do start in November uh, in the, oh, pinch and a punch for the first of the month. Pinch and a punch. Um, so I think we're starting that. Um, let me tell you, actually. 15th of November, so in two weeks time, we have our first one go live. We will actually do our um, planning session between now and then as well. So that's you and me, one-on-one. -on -one. We're gonna plan out and map out what 2020 looks like for you. So, and I love doing these sessions. I'm actually, I'm so excited. Uh, so make sure you register, because I wanna do a planning session with you. Um, we're gonna map out what 2020 looks like for you. And then the first week of the week of the eight week program rolls out on the 15th. It is delivered live. We will be, I will be delivering the content. There'll be Q and A made available. We will actually not finish that call until you've got all of your questions answered and you know exactly what you need to do. Then you've got a week to implement. And then we're gonna hop on the call. We're gonna do it again, go through the train, go through Q and A, go through training, make sure you've got anything else answered. And we're going to roll out like that. Now, given the time of year for this particular one, just so that you know, we will deliver the, the, we'll have a call that will go live on the 11th of December, which is actually the day before my birthday, just saying. And then we'll kick back in after New Year's, so on the 3rd of January. So this particular, this November round of the program, when you come in at that, we don't even finish until uh, the like, like late mid-January, so like the 17th of January. So we've actually got about 10 weeks that we're going to be working together. If you include that in there from now, then we've got about 12 weeks. So we've got, we've got a really good chunk of time to be really nailing this and, and working through it. So nearly three months. And then we've actually got the two-day event that will happen, I think I've decided um, February, March next year, probably February next year. That will be one that you can come in on. If you want to start the February program, then I've got pre-work sitting here ready for you to go so you can actually start getting some momentum underneath you before the um, before the program even starts. And I've, we've had so many people make a bunch of money just from doing the planning session and then jumping into the pre-work because you, you, you have forward momentum, right? So there you go. I'm really excited to see you guys. Have a really amazing and happy day. I've got today and tomorrow with the crew here and then we've got Visible Live happening in Melbourne on Sunday and Monday. We're in Sydney on Tuesday, Wednesday, Gold Coast, Thursday, Friday. I head over to Perth on Saturday. Then we've got Perth, Sunday, Monday, and then I'm gonna fly home on late Monday night. So if you are able to make it live and in the room, then that'd be great. Um, otherwise, get out there. Go help some people, have a whole shit ton of fun doing it. Do things in your way though, okay? Do things in a way that feels really good for you, that's really aligned and, and just watch the whole world rise up to meet you. It's just really freaking exciting. So there you go, everybody. Have an amazing day and remember the world is ready for your brand of awesomeness.